Hi Lana, hello and welcome once again to Lana's Coach. So today we are going to look at introduction and history of computers. So basically we are going to look at uh, what computer is, uh, some kind of uh, generation of computers, classification of, of computers, and also application of computers. So but before that, always feel free uh, to subscribe. All right, thanks. Now, uh, as I've mentioned, we are going to take a brief uh, look at introduction to computer, uh, look at some of the evolution of computing devices, talking about processors, memories, and so on. Uh, of course, we are going also to look at generation of computers, how the computers are classified, and also how we can apply uh, the use of computers in our day-to-day -day, uh, lives, irrespective of which kind of maybe a career you are pursuing, you need to understand how these particular computers can be used. So, what is a computer? Uh, ideally, this is not uh, a session for talking about uh, what a computer is, but you can't really determine the history and also talk about computer application without understanding first what a computer is. So, there are wide, uh, wide variety of um, definitions that you can give to a computer. Uh, people say that computer is an electronic device, some will say it constitutes of input, output, and so on. So basically, a computer is an electronic machine uh, that takes input from the user, right? It could be uh, some kind of uh, entry to a Word document, like some characters, right? Uh, it processes that particular input and generates output in the form of useful uh, information. So basically, here is where you need to maybe uh, give or send some set of instructions to, uh, to the computer where it needs to understand those particular instructions. Understanding is what we refer to as processing, right? So once it, is, it has understood uh, the kind of instruction, now you can actually display them. So we have different categories of uh, or parts of computer. We have input devices, we have storage devices, uh, we also have output devices. So holistically, this is what comprises a computer system. So in a nutshell, just understand a computer as an, electro an electronic device that has the capability of receiving input and actually uh, processing that particular input and, of course, uh, displaying that particular output in a useful information. So, as I mentioned, we can always uh, maybe have a brief, uh, in a brief understanding of what a computer is. As I've said, it's an, elect uh, an electronic device that has, that has the capability of receiving input, uh, processing that particular input, and storing that data, or actually displaying that. These particular uh, inputs uh, actually operate under some set of instruction, as I mentioned. Yeah? So, computer has the capability of understanding, or actually what we refer to as decoding these particular instructions, right? And then storing them into their own memory. Uh, of course, also this particular computer has the capability uh, to produce these particular results and store them for uh, future use in what we refer to as uh, storage devices. So, in a nutshell, a computer can be seen as a device that has the capability of receiving. Receiving means having some form of input. Uh, processing, right? Ability to maybe uh, decode those particular instructions, uh, storing them, or they can always output them. Examples of uh, computers, but we're going to see uh, also these particular examples. We have desktop computers. I uh, know you understand what laptops, even your smartphone, right? Uh, people normally say uh, or ask, is a smartphone a computer? Yes. Why? Because uh, uh, it has this kind of uh, structure of actually inputting. It can be able to also process and also store information. So just like a normal uh, computer. So that's why we normally say a smartphone we normally refer to a smartphone as a computing a device. We also have smart office calculators and also point of sales that you can uh, refer to them as a computer. So briefly, a computer has a central processing unit. Yeah, It also has some kind of output devices. It also has some form of input and also it can be able to uh, store. So what makes computer powerful? Right or why is it uh, why is it that computer is seen as a very unique uh, device? The speed, 
yeah of processing information is very very fast it also has enhanced storage capabilities very accurate yeah you can always do some kind of uh, uh i mean arithmetic very very fast uh with some kind of form of accuracy it's reliable uh, versatile and also it's also diligence uh, of course you can also add other characteristics that you understand so uh the computing concept that we need to put into perspective here is that a computer has the capability of accepting raw data uh, processing that particular data storing that particular data and actually de delivering that particular output maybe in my subsequent uh, discussion we are going to look at how a computer actually function but today we are just introducing these minor concepts and also having a look at the various uh, generation of computers so uh, gener generation of computers consist of uh, different uh, generations as you are going to see and a history of computing right but before that how then do we uh, actually understand uh, the actually the transformation of a computing capability from one generation to the other so you need to understand the basic computer functions right uh, that were implemented or are implemented in variety of technologies like the very first computers they are very mechanical right so we they were implemented using mechanical uh, technology we had also electrical computers we currently uh, use the optical uh, computers also we have uh, the recent one of course some kind of research is happening what we refer to as the computer technology that uses the quantum uh, particles these are very very powerful uh, computers so we can always maybe look at these particular uh, technologies with res respect to the various uh, computing uh, generations so uh, again uh, we're talking about history we need to maybe understand the evolution of computers where did we start now i've shared a link within the description that actually will guide you to understand the various uh computers that we had yeah talking about the abacus the sand tables so that at least you can have a thorough understanding about these particular uh, computers so these manual computing devices you can always click within the description uh, click on that particular link and then you can read more about them right we also have the automated computing devices right as i'd mentioned about the technologies they were mechanical electrical so we have difference engine right so someone is maybe could ask you maybe which kind of uh, or which type of uh, uh, computing device that were first automated right now the first person which we actually give credit to is a professor of mathematics known as uh, uh, a, a professor of mathematics known as Charles Babbage who happened to have actually uh, invented or came up with this kind of modern uh, computer so when we talk about history of computer we need to bring this into perspective now the very first generation of computers which were launched or actually happened to exist between 1940 uh, to 1956 this particular generation of computers are known to use vacuum tubes, right? Now, this particular technology at, at that time was considered as very fast. Yeah, so that's one of the advantages. Yeah? Uh, the use of va vacuum technology between this particular period, uh, they were seen to be very, very fast. They were seen, uh, seen to actually carry out very complex mathematical uh, problems. So those are the advantages of first generation of computers. Uh, by then of course they had also disadvantages that came up uh, along with them like for instance uh, they only performed various or carried out various instruction using machine language a machine language falls under the category of low level uh, language so, so uh, basically it's only the machine that could actually uh, talk amongst themselves they were also designed as special purpose computers now when we talk about special purpose computer we refer to as uh, a particular computer just actually uh, intended for a specific purpose so in case maybe it was uh, used to maybe uh, let's say for design purposes right that one was just left for that particular computer so like for example right now we have a variety of packages of computer uh, computing softwares so if you had you, are, you happen to install the very many softwares so you have to have a specific computer yeah that is going to run those particular uh, software so if you had 10 packages of softwares 
uh, then that means you had to have 10 computers. I believe you understand that. Now, the design of this particular technology of vacuum was very, very uh, bulky. Yeah, like you have, like in one room, like a, a room in an office could only uh, maybe accommodate one or two computers. So they they made these particular computers to be very huge and bulky, and this made uh, this ensure that they were not really uh, portable. You could not transfer them from one point uh, to the other due to the out their huge size. Uh, now this also brought into uh, another perspective of generating a lot of heat. So also the cooling system by then could not handle uh, the very uh, the heat that were uh, that were actually being produced from these particular uh, computers. So with this particular heat, yeah, there were always frequent yeah, uh, frequent hardware faults that were uh, realized. So these are some of the disadvantages that actually can be uh, appended to the first generation uh, computers. Therefore, we proceeded to the second generation of computers between 1956 to 1963. So this particular generation of computers transformed from using vacuum technology into transistor uh, technology, right? So, uh, of course, the advantages also were actually improved like uh, the speed they were fastest in their time yeah they were easy to program because of the use of at least some kind of high level language known as the assembly language right uh, their size of course they were huge but the size reduced a little bit so they could be easily uh, transferred from one point to the other because of their small and light weight right uh, due to their reduced size, also they happen to use very less power in carrying out their operations. So this also uh, maybe made the maintainer's uh, cycle to be reduced, yeah, because the faults or the hardware faults were greatly uh, reduced. Now it also came with its own share of disadvantages, right? In as much as the input and output media were improved they were not really that uh, sufficient or efficient. Uh, they also require to be placed because of uh, ideally their huge sizes uh, and also the emission of heat. They were to be placed in air conditioned uh, places. Uh, the cost of these computers were extremely high. Yeah, uh, Most people could not afford them. And of course, they were also dedicated to some kind of special uh, execution of some kind of applications. Again, we had the third generation computers that were employed between 1964 to 1975. Now, this particular generation came up with some kind of improved technology known as the integrated circuits. Now, this particular integrated circuits brought in added advantages, such as the speed of the computers. Yeah? So, they were fast yeah, compared to the second and the first generation. They were easily portable due to their reduced size, right? They also used high level languages to execute some set of instructions. Here is when we realized the use of COBOL, the Fortran languages and so on. The softwares or even the hardware could be installed very easily, yeah, and they required some less space. They could execute different types of application, right? And they were more reliable. Uh, because the maintenance cycle were also reduced due to less hardware faults. Now, they also came up with the, uh, their own disadvantage. Of course, the disadvantage kept on reducing. So, the storage capacity of these computers were still very small. In as much as the speed were enhanced, uh, we, the storage capacity was still uh, very, very small. Uh, the performance also was not really uh, perfect, yeah, because uh, it involved complex computation which could not really be uh, associated with the already established small uh, storage capacity, right? The cost of these computers were also still very high, yeah. Uh, very few people could be able to afford them. And of course, they also required some kind of air conditioned places which also were very, very uh, expensive. Now, we also had the fourth generation of computers. These ones were employed between 1975 to 1989. So I believe here we actually had some kind of improved technology. 
Yeah. So the use of uh, large scale integration technology and the very large scale integration technology was realized. Talking about the motherboard where we could integrate the different components of the computer. So here is where actually uh, the, we, we could talk about uh, the first actually uh, motherboard was brought into uh, perspective. So uh, talking about the motherboard, the computers now are start, uh, were given a particular name, right, which was termed as the personal computer, the PC, right. So uh, the fourth generation of computer had the large or the very large scale integration uh, technology. It came also with some kind of advantages, right. They were very powerful, now, no doubt, compared to maybe the first, second and the third, yeah, because of their processing speed and access time yeah when you wanted to retrieve some kind of uh, maybe application it could happen very very fast there was some kind of improved storage capacity right and this one also ensured that the processing speed right remember the processor works uh, in tandem with the memory right and the storage so if the storage is improved actually also it means the speed of processing was also fast they are reliable and required less maintenance because of the reduced heat emission, uh, maybe the reduced size, right? They are also provided. They also provided user-friendly environment. Uh, talking about the graphical user interface, right? Uh, we saw the introduction of the GUI instead of the DOS. Programs were written in high-level languages that maybe human beings could also understand. Uh, they also required less power to operate, right? And they were versatile and suitable for every application. The disadvantage that was realized within this particular uh, generation was it was actually difficult actually to tie down or wire the motherboard. Yeah, so it, it was not very easy because it was then that we introduced this kind of technology. So it was very complicated. It had a lot of errors, right? And the system kept on malfunctioning. Uh, the working of these computers was still dependent on the instructions given the, by the programmer. Right. So whatever programmer or the, so whatever programming task that were issued is what will actually inform the computer what to do, not actually the user or the end user. So that marks the end of the disadvantages. Of course, there are others. Fifth generation, we'll be talking about the latest kind of uh, computers. Uh, we can associate them with the fifth generation of computers. Of course, we have other added generation of computers. But the fifth generation uh, used the ultra-large scale, ultra-large scale integration technology. This is an improved kind of technology that allows very, very many uh, tens of millions of components to be integrated together yeah, in one small chip. Yeah. So this kind of uh, generation of computer is actually uh, the latest, yeah, or what we can refer to as uh, the mother of the current technology that we're using at this particular uh, point. So, what are some of the advantages? It goes without saying that they are very fast, they are very powerful, right? Uh, what makes them very fast and powerful? Technology that's actually associated with them. Uh, th uh, they are able to execute large a number of uh, applications we have looked at how they are accurate and so on. they are they are small in size they are portable talk about the laptops they are very versatile yeah so the users of these computers find it very comfortable to use them because of the several added uh, also multimedia functionalities so we can go ahead and talk about the different uh, advantages as we know them now Again, when we talk about generations of computers and, evolu and evolution of computers, we need to really understand what makes one particular generation of computer different uh, from the other. We talk about performance enhancement. So there are a lot of uh, technologies that have been uh, enhanced from the very first generation up to the uh, generation that we are in. Yeah? Like the computer performance can be greatly enhanced are through faster clock speed, right? When we talk about processing speed, we talk about the computer having the capability of processing uh, millions of instructions, right, per second. So faster clock speed. Uh, also, 
performance enhancement can be seen uh, uh, through introduction of overlapping and parallel instruction processing. Now, what we refer to here is that we don't really just uh, make, uh, we don't just allow the computer uh, to process one particular instruction and then wait for it to finish and then is when the, one, the other one start. So they can always overlap, right? So we can have uh, different paths of data processing to ensure that the speed of the uh, computer is improved. Now, there is also improved, yeah, the data path, yeah, or the buses where this particular data is transmitted. I'm uh, talking about the roads, yeah, you can have dual carriageway and so on. So the larger the, uh, the road, the more the vehicles can go through it, yeah, or you can have some vehicles going uh, to the opposite direction without really having some kind of interference. That is the same thing when we talk about wider, faster data, data paths. So the computer has the capability of processing multiple data uh, without really having collisions and so on. Uh, we can also talk about faster disk access when you want to maybe uh, uh, click on a particular application. Yeah? How fast can you access that particular application or store, right? Or save that particular application. And of course, memory, right? We talk about uh, storage capability. Yeah, when a particular computer or processor processes in instructions, are they able to retrieve those particular instructions very fast and actually process them? So we also have the cache technology, which is appended or integrated within the processor itself. Now this cache technology allows the processor to very, very fast retrieve the already uh, fetched processes without really going the full cycle of getting it from the main uh, memory. So those are some of the performance enhancements that, that you can always have within the computing uh, system. Now, let's now understand the classification of computers. Computers can be classified based on the, I mean, based on what they do, their sizes, right, and so on. Yeah, so we can have computers that are analog, some are digital, right? so we have uh, computers executing some bulky applications, some simple applications, and so on. So the first classification of computers is based on operating systems. Now, we have computers that still can be able to process analog signals, yeah, or what we refer to as continuous electrical signals. When you talk about uh, maybe, for example, networking, computer networking, we can always associate the communication uh, process by introducing wireless and wired communication so wireless can be transmitted or uh, wireless signals can be captured as analog yeah or what we refer to as continuous electric signals when you transform this particular uh, wireless or actually electrical continuous electrical signals into some kind of bits that the computer can understand we refer to, uh, to that as digital uh, computers so digital computers has the capability of storing and processing only digital form in what we refer to as one and zero. Of course, we have the enhanced or actually sophisticated computers that can be able to handle both analog and digital. What we refer to as hybrid uh, computers. So they can combine both the signals from analog computers and uh, digital computers. So we can classify the computers based on operating principle. The second way of classifying computers is based on applications. Where do we use these particular computers? So we have general purpose computers that can work in all environments. Uh, talking about maybe if you're a school going uh, person, you have your research work, you can use them in an office and so on. That's what we refer to as general purpose. Now, the others are special. Like if you go to maybe uh, labs, or uh, we can organization that maybe do some kind of data analysis they can always like servers they can always have some dedicated computers to carry specific tasks right so those are what we refer to as special purpose uh, computers again we can classify the computers based on size and capability we talk about uh, laptops we talk about smartphones and so on so uh, based on maybe the discussion that we, ha we, we, we have had, how the first generation were bulky up to the latest kind of generation. So the size has always been a determinant factor. 
So we have microcomputers that are designed to be used by individuals. We also have mini computers, right? This one can handle more data and process more in, uh, kind of instructions. We also have mainframe. I think I'll, I'll show you some kind of diagram of how mainframe computers look like. Actually, they are very large, yeah? Uh, they are very large and they're used in very large organizations. We also have supercomputers. These ones are very, very fast uh, computers because of their nature of processing a large kind of instruction or a lot of instruction uh, per second. Now, uh, talking about the diagrams, here we are. So you can see the desktop, how they look like. Uh, I think we are familiar with these. Yeah, normally they have some kind of tower or what we refer to as the, uh, the pro, I mean, the CPU, right? Some people talk, talk about this as a CPU, right? Some will talk them talk about them as a tower and so on. Uh, we also have the screen, as you can see, the mouse. We also have the laptops, right? Uh, very, very uh, effective and efficient for portability purposes. Uh, we also have the netbook. These are more or uh, less the same as laptop, but they are very small, right? Primarily used for accessing internet. Yeah. So if you are on the move, right, and you uh, you want to use your laptop uh, for internet-based purposes, you can go for a netbook. Of course, we have hybrid. Hybrid computers have the capability of combining two technologies together. You could la like to use maybe a particular screen from a different manufacturer, but you like to use uh, maybe the, uh, the processor or uh, let's say maybe the mouse or the keyboard from a different manufacturer. So you can combine them together so that you have a hybrid computer. Uh, we also have mainframe computer, as you can see, as a, it, it looks very big. Uh, they are good for bulk data processing, yeah, such as uh, maybe uh, taking census data, industry and consumer statistics, or resource planning, and so on. Uh, of course, we have the server computer. Uh, server is a very dedicated uh, computer within the network that has the capability of processing and responding to the uh, client request. So if you are within a networked uh, computer environment, there is high chances that you have always uh, maybe received the services of a server. Uh, we also ha we have different categories of server. We have file server, we have web server. If you want to print within the network, we have the print server and so on. Now, just to wind up within this introduction of computers, also it's very important to understand where or the application yeah, of these particular computers. Uh, in a given environment, we use computers to actually carry out different activities and tasks. Like in a business environment, yeah, uh, computers can be used because uh, of the, re the reliability, versatility, uh, uh, features that they provide. Yeah? So a business organization can use them to do payroll calculations for budgeting purposes. Yeah? I mean, managing employee data through use of databases, uh, maintenance of stock. Right? So that's one a way that you can use our computers. We can also use them within the banking environment, right? So today, banks have really improved their services. Like we have the online accounting facilities, yeah, which can help you uh, check your current uh, balance. You can even deposit. Yeah, you can check your interest. I mean, there are a lot of actually improved functionality within the banking sector. Talk about even the ATM machines, right? So long as the go, uh, days are gone when you could go physically to a bank uh, hall, uh, maybe to do some uh, depositing and withdrawal. Yeah? So you can also use uh, ATMs. Now, also with the improved yeah, online banking systems, uh, I foresee a case where we are going, not also going to have ATM because most people are nowadays carrying out their uh, banking through uh, maybe mobile apps and so on. Now, we have also insurance industry that rely greatly on the use of computer. Like they use it maybe to, uh, uh, to carry out some kind of uh, uh, stock management. I mean, with re respect to uh, interest calculations, I mean, maturity date and so on. So there are a lot of things that they use where computers for, as you can see. They can also use them to update their policies and so on. 
in education it goes without saying that uh, maybe uh, this is the sector that has greatly uh, benefited uh, through a computer application of course one of the benefits is what we are doing right now yeah you can be able to get uh, to understand uh, maybe uh, your education or what you need to learn through via a variety of uh, platforms right so the computer provides a tool within the education system known as computer-based education right uh, this involves controlling delivering and evaluation of computers of learning we have e-learning online learning a courtesy of computers and so on so there are a lot of things even when uh, the universities or the colleges want to capture the details of their staff and for their student uh, records and so on so computers come in handy in the education uh, sector we have also marketing industry i think about the digital marketing uh, strategies that have been employed nowadays we can say the transformation from the 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 traditional way of marketing yeah uh, like people nowadays they can do shopping from the comfort of their homes the advertisement can be done through variety of digital means we can always have some kind of um, a software to enable us to do uh, what to refer to as uh, maybe to design very good advertisements and so on and so forth right so we can apply them within the marketing industry uh, also within the health sector or uh, it provides it helps improve the healthcare like uh, when it comes to diagnostic system uh, talk about lab di diagnostic system so it goes without saying that when you visit our hospitals nowadays they are equipped with computers and we need uh, uh, people or technical guys to take to ensure that uh, this kind of computer within the hospital don't doesn't fail uh, maybe when it comes to surgery and so on it also provide additional uh, functionality of patient monitoring and so on so these are some of the applications that can happen within the health care now within the engineering field also the computer comes in handy uh, engineering uh, actually have different domains like structural engineering industrial engineering arch architectural engineering right it has helped uh, actually in designing uh, different kind of structures when it comes to structural engineering like designing ships uh, buildings and so on even architecture you can see this guy kind of designing a motherboard right so uh, computer application happens uh, or is actually vital when it comes to the engineering field now also the military yeah they have improved their way of operation like how they control their missile how they communicate i mean uh, and it's it's it goes uh, actually way back that actually internet was discovered based on the military operations yeah so if you happen to look at the history of internet uh, you will realize that uh, they have it has come a long way through military operation uh, also invention of smart weapons precise weapons yeah that can actually uh, maybe have accurate target uh, is based on a computer application within the military field so they have also actually benefited a lot when it comes to use of computers uh, again communication has been enhanced right uh, through emails we know we can have some kind of chat applications right we can upload download through the uh, file transfer protocols right we can have some kind of video conferencing so communication has really been improved or enhanced uh, through the use of a computer so this is one area that actually right now it's very hard to communicate uh, without the intervention or actual use of computers so i think we can go on and on uh, to maybe talk about these different uh, applications in different domains so should you know or understand of other uh, domains you can always uh, comment right so that at least we share more so uh, thanks and uh, if you need other additional uh, learning material uh, concerning to this particular topic you can always visit uh, the website link within the description uh, within uh, the learners.learnerscoach.co.k all right thanks